Okay, so today Patty and I are planting our kohlrabi and kale down in between the two greenhouses that were put up. And there's how many? We have 770 to plant this this one, and then we'll have the same for our next planting, and it'll just keep going. And uh, we have a really cool planter thing yeah. that we're going to show you, and it makes it a lot easier so you're not down on your hands and knees. And today it is so freaking hot. Get awesome. Up, up, up. It's awesome. But like, we're sweating. Yeah, it's hot. But you know what? We're gonna be out. We were stringing in the top at the top of the greenhouse, though, so it was super hot. Now we're in air. Um, yeah. So, so let's show them this uh, this little tool that we use. It's awesome. Everybody needs one. Let's go. Let's go. This is the greenhouse we put the plastic on and they went to try to tighten it up and just this huge gust of wind came and kind of helped blow it all off again. So back to square one, um, but that's okay because we are planting out here and we aren't planting on any plastic mulch or raised beds, but we have this uh, cool little tool that we're going to show you and explain how it works. So. This machine we've had for how long, Wayne? Ten years. Ten years? Yeah. So we call it a plugger. I can't remember what it was called, and of course it doesn't have any writing on it. This comes from Johnny's Seeds. So what we do is we make sure it's closed. We put it down. We open it up. The person on the other side of me will plunk the plant in, pull it up. Another person will go and just pack the, the uh, soil around the plant and we just keep going so there's no bending over nothing except for the person packing around um, another thing too I said we aren't doing any um, plastic mulch on these beds but we are laying we have drip tape laid underneath the length and we're just doing like 50 foot beds all the way there. so let's get started and we will show you how this works so you might not see it but that is what the the inside looks like <laughs> so I have it closed right now and that's once we push it down to dig and then you open it up somebody plunks the, the plant in and you lift it up and voila so it, it's an awesome little thing and this so, this and was the about, handles are so move the handle back and forth and you can see that little moving yeah. in and out that's almost like the spade at the bottom yeah and this would this at that time was about 150 bucks so it's really not that expensive and saves a lot of uh, that back in. So. First row we kind of struggled a bit getting used to it and then the second one was smooth sailing so that took us about 10 minutes if that to plant we did uh, 100 and 108 yeah 110 no, no, 100 about 110 plants yeah yeah so pretty quick there so that was pretty good yeah. just over an hour and we got 770 Plants planted. Minus the three. Oh yeah, minus the three. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So it's all good. Wayne's prepping the beds over there for our other stuff. What's that? Oh yeah, the drips. So we should have done this when when we first started planting. Is got the drips running. Uh, Wayne got them running, and now we could see exactly where the drip tape is because you don't want to hit that with your uh, planter. But I'll tell you, 
that those planters are amazing. So hopefully they still sell them. I imagine they do. So if you can get your hands on one, get one. They're fantastic. Yes. So that was a good day. It was a good day. All right. Thanks for your help, bud. Ethan's. Oh, I got a bug crawling on my screen. What? EthanChalmersBlogs.myshopify.com for some hot, hot merch. You guys can get it and represent. Oh, we yeah. Make a, we should make a collection for Spring Hill Farm. We should, yeah. yeah. Stay tuned then. We're having a merch shop for Spring Hill Farm. Okay. <laughs> Are you playing in the mud, Hale? getting grounded <laughs> to the earth. Okay, so update on the peas. They are coming along great, and Patty and I are gonna show you how we string them. So she's tying our string onto the post that the guys put in, and then we have bamboo sticks down either side, about six feet apart. Yeah. So, we're going to take our box of string and go down the line and wrap it around each bamboo about six inches on top of the other strings. And hold it tight in between. And easy with two people so you can keep it tighter but one person can definitely do it and we're gonna go all the way to the end so we'll let her finish that and uh, yeah where's my radish do you want a radish <laughs> so we're on the opposite end now and as you can see Patty has uh, looped it around the t-bar and she's heading up back that way so when heading the back. heading back so hopefully when the peas are done we can just take the string and roll it back up nice and neat and do it all again next year. Oh, she's and Patty's done stringing. Look at that. Well, Way I could to have go. went up higher but there's the odd uh, bamboo that's shorter so I'll just So what's the uh, benefit of planting peas inside and then outside? Just earlier product? Oh, yeah, we'll get earlier. Much earlier. But the thing is, peas like to be a little cooler, so this is going to be our only planting of the indoor peas. And then the rest will be all outdoor. But this will give us a head start because our CSA eh? right. starts very soon. It's so easy, isn't it? Yeah. It just works really well. Well, and it, it just makes everything neat, too. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of cleanup to do in the high tunnel here, but that'll come. And uh, Shane's working on that other bed, and then we're going to plant, once he's done the far beds, we're going to plant our... Uh, Heirloom tomatoes and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, and a little Ooh. tiller works good too. Perfect the size. Tiller, yeah. Yeah. It's that, nice and light, eh? That was eh? originally my tiller for my gardens. Oh, she's a farm community tiller <laughs> now. Uh, I don't have gardens anymore. <laughs> and all those little beets we planted are now growing and growing and growing and they're really healthy and uh, soon we'll be able to pick them for market and stuff. And we picked almost 30 bunches of radishes today, so we'll show you them too because they are fantastic. Here's a nice one here. So they are nice, big, and a beautiful color. And that's, they were about probably a month, three weeks planted and that's what you get and give it a little rinse mm. <laughs> you want to eat it sure it's good to go grow your own folks man and a quick peek at our pond we have that uh, they hand dug and it just fills up with water because we have springs hence Spring Hill Farms so hand dug well, what do you mean? Like it wasn't here. You mi you built it. Like, yeah, we, all the, we had like 15 people here with shovels, and we just hocked you up on the bank. Yeah. So we're going to show you our pond pump system that helps water the high tunnel. So the green hose goes in the pond, and it's connected to the generator pump. 
pump. <laughs> the pump. And then that sucks the water up and then the pressure shoots it through the hose and connects to the high tunnel where all our other valves on. And if uh, it's 5.5 horsepower pump. 5.5 horsepower pump. 150 gallons per minute. Works good. Works great. And we also uh, switch lines to do uh, our other plots that are down by the new greenhouses. So the kale and coral we planted yesterday that is the drip lines you've seen us running. They ran from here. So if you live where it doesn't rain a lot, this is a great way to water. And this other black hose was just informed it is a relief hose. It's just so uh, basically you can relieve pressure. If you have, if the, or you can rev the pump down. There's tons of ways you can mess with it. Open it up, you can reduce the pressure if you don't have a regulator. You can idle your pump down if you don't have a regulator. Um, yeah. So what happens if there's too much pressure? It just well, waters too running, fast? Like, if you're running the really thin drip tape, I believe that's 12 PSI max. So you just leave the pump idle the pump down and you'd actually get a 12 psi regulator an inline regulator just to ensure that you're not popping any hoses because once you lay that plastic mulch over top of the bed you know it's gonna be it's a pain if, if one of your you know if your drip pops or something like that you got to pull it out and feed another one through like and, last year we had the one keep popping yeah which isn't fun no so good informative any questions you know what to do so we have this ancient uh, tool here. The simplest is better. You don't need all that high tech, tech stuff to lay some drip tape or make a furrow. You throw that attachment on. So this it, is, what is it, a wheel hoe? Yeah, a wheel hoe. Wheel hoe. With a little single furrow. And uh, you run it through the ground just to make a, you know, a little furrow. You can show us. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna show us here. So this is the outside pea bed that Shane made yesterday and it's planted with the drip tapes. Just go in between the rows, Shane, and show them how it works, kind of. Yeah, so it just uh, makes a hole for you. And we weed with that also, so we'll go in between the planted rows and that digs up the weeds and we can pull them out easier. With a different attachment, we have like an overlapping knife system that goes on the bottom. So if you are on Instagram, you can go check Shane's out and see how he prepared this bed here. Cover it up if it's a windy day so it doesn't take off on you. And then continue it all the way down and uh yeah. And where's that thing you seeded with? It's in there, inside the high tunnel. But anyway, yeah, we gotta hook these up to the header and stuff anyway, still. So. so there's our drip tape again hooked up to this pipe, which is hooked up to the pump and gets water from the pond. Okay, so when the drip tape is laid, we do our seeding and this machine tool. The Earthway. The Earthway by Johnny's. It's we, from Johnny's. From Johnny's. It's, uh, it's an Earthway seeder. So that saves a lot of back pain. <laughs> oh, it speeds up the process like crazy. And then you can pull your discs off too. You can change your discs for different uh, seed sizes. So this one's for beans and small peas, it says right on it. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just a super, super big time saver. A back saver, eh? Yeah. Oh, imagine like, I'm not even sure how many So and that just pushes and here. that thing turns and pops the seeds out however far they're spaced. And then buries them. And you buries get, them. You get the odd seed that doesn't get buried. Like out of this whole patch I had probably 
I don't know, 20 seeds maybe. But you did the, the double swipe. Yeah, yeah. we go up and down each row. So we go down and then come back on the same row just to thicken it up, the, pl the planting or the seeding up. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's, that's like the cedar we were using earlier in the field. The, or not the cedar, the planter. Yeah, the, the plugger. plugger. It works really well too. Well, you imagine doing that like all the kale and kohlrabi you guys did yeah. on we're, your hands and knees. Yeah, well we're going to try the, we have um, 1,050 big onions, the Yelsa Craig onions to do. And last year we did it on our hands and knees. This year we're going to do it with the, with the plugger. Yeah. And because they're in 50 cells, so they're big enough. With that plugger too, you need to make sure that they're not in big packs because they won't fit in that hole. But we forgot to mention that. And another thing with, I don't know if you guys mentioned it yesterday, but with uh, the uh, drip tape, of how you got to be careful because once you bury the drip tape, you can't really see where the drip tape is. So you gotta yeah. Sure. Said after you guys ran the we turned it on and we could see it. You can see the line of water yeah, moistening. So that's, yeah, it's so much easier. Yeah. So there's little. But he, even with this here, I couldn't see it. So this line right here, I actually just drug a rake on it. You know what I mean? To yeah. mark out the center so I could see it on each side. Yeah. Very cool. So. Yeah, people underestimate the old equipment oh, like yeah. that. And this thing here is amazing. That thing works so slick and it's twice as fast really as a both of our tillers. And it's not plastic. Yeah, like th that's it's... all original. I bet you that thing's... Yeah. How old do you think that is? Oh, I don't know. 60 years Where'd old? Where'd you get that? We bought this from a guy in Boston and uh, he told us how old it was, but I can't remember. And there's tines you can get for uh, weeding. Like I said, there was the discs different attachments and you can actually get was it this one an attachment for this that actually rolls out and buries your drip tape really so, yeah, so pretty, kind of an all-in-one tool yeah, it is and people well, would they, see people would see that at like a you know a garage set or something and just think it's you know it's lawn ornament yeah yeah but that this one works saves so much time yeah. and it's older like that's you could buy that now at a, at a yard sale for like 50 bucks and then go on the website and buy like the knives and stuff that we bought. I Until people know what how much they're worth and then they, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they work so good. Yeah. Awesome. Never underestimate antiques. Thanks, Shane. Oh, no Thanks. problem. For that no problem, huh? Informative <laughs> information session. <laughs> Knowledge. <laughs> information station. Uh, it's over 2,000 pounds. Okay. So. Yeah. So everybody is asking about our fish meal. This it's huge. Is, I know. So 2,600 pounds we get. This comes from Manitoulin Island. Um, it's organic. It's awesome stuff. And it's, uh, what else do they call it? Black gold? Black magic. Black magic. And it's amazing. Um, so, and it's cheap. Like it's, it's cheap. I, I would say it's over just over a hundred bucks, something like that. Like twenty, I think it's yeah. two, for all I think that. Two thousand pound. Two thousand yeah. pound bag. Anyhow, Maybe. that's a big bag. So we get it delivered. We have many bags around the property, and we put this in everything, just like Frank's red hot sauce. <laughs> and yeah. what is it like? What all is in there? Um, fish and it's sauna. Like a fishery. Yeah, it's like... So it's just the guts and. No, I don't know about that. Well, it'd I be think... like a, everything that's not usable. On the fish, gets yeah. put into this and mixed with wood chips. And mixed with wood chips, yeah. But it, it's so rich looking and so, uh, it's nice. You know, it's nice and well, cool too. Yeah, I, you see different yeah. videos where people throw fish in the hole and then yeah. plant and it says that good. So I guess that would be yeah. the same thing. And this is already cured, I guess, what it is. Yeah, it's it kiln dried. And it doesn't stink. Like kiln dried? There's no, no smell there's to no it. No smell at all. No, none. None, none at all. Taste it. No, I'm good. I don't like wood. <laughs> Radishes up. Oh, you're gonna be fine. So, any questions more about that? Uh, leave a comment. Are those for dinner? These are for a customer that just called and wants a bunch of radishes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so that's it. Right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Say bye. Peace. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.